good day and welcome to a overview of Halo ITSM. My name is Michael Estep. I'm a senior solutions architect over here at Excalibur Data Systems, one of the Halo ITSM partners. And today we're going to take a look at a quick overview of everything that we have as far as capability wise within the Halo ITSM platform. First, we're going to take a look at Portal. So this is what Portal looks like out of the box. At the top here, you'll see if we have are having any issues with maybe a service that we have going on. Outlook or Office 365 looks like it is having an issue. It has a red explanation point. And we have Microsoft Teams, that, which has a wrench, which tells me that it is currently in maintenance. So if we click into one of these, it gives us several options up here at the top. This is essentially like problem management in any of the other ITSM platforms that we worked with in the past. We can log an incident, or I can just keep me updated on the status of the Office 365. What service status that we have, so this particular one is in fault, and then the latest update that may have been posted for this one so that I can get updates on what's going on with Office 365 as we have this fault or this outage. Going back to the home page, the next part we have on here is a search, and this search is a contained search. So if I type in printer, for instance, it's going to look for all articles that I have printer. If I just type print, it will find that print job, it will find printers, it will also find a service that I have as far as print services is concerned. Going back to our portal page again, our home, we have our cards down here at the bottom. Um, this is our service catalog. If we wanted to report an incident, we would go directly to our form, the My Tickets of anything that I have open, and then our Herp articles are our KBAs. One of the things that I really love about Halo is it is a reactive platform. And what I mean by that is, as you see, if I move this smaller, it looks and sees at the resolution that you have and it automatically adjusts. So from a mobile standpoint, we could see that the portal would work on anything that we had, an iPad or an Android or an Apple um, device of any sort. They also have an option for a native mobile app, and it is both on the Apple Store uh, and the Google Store. Looking at our service catalog, we can take a look and see that we've got several of our different categories down here. We've got a hardware one that gives us even further down, and if we clicked on one of these, this will give us a form. If we go back up home and look at our service catalog, I want to show you the great thing that I like about Halo, and this would be the forms themselves. So in the past, I've worked with ITSM programs. If I wanted to hide or unhide or make a, a specific form for something that I was doing, I would have to add a, another form to make a different one or to make something look different or have different fields, or I would have to layer them, which was a nightmare for administration. Here we have reactive. So if I click this button, it drops everything down. So what I had was the comments only. And when I click this button, it gives me a bunch of different fields that we have down here. If I uncheck that, you'll notice my comments come back up. We have single selects. So I have a single select. I can only select one of these. We also have multi-selects. So if I select several of these, then it will put several of these into my field into a common delimited list. Other things that we have in here, um, if I wanted to do a shared drive, yes or no, again, it drops it down. It puts it in between these fields that we have here. If I said no, it would take those fields away that I needed to ask additional specific questions for. I'm not going to submit this one at this moment um, because I have some examples that we'll look at in the client. Dragging and dropping attachments, or I could click on this and I could upload attachments. is another one of the features that we have. Everything in here is essentially about the same. We've got our KBAs so that we can search our KBAs if I had access to them as a customer. Um, and if I wanted to see my tickets that I had open, I could definitely go over here and see the open tickets that I had and whatever that we had as far as status, they would be along the lines over on the right hand side. All of the things that I would have access to view. If I wanted to add a note, I could click this button and add a note and let my technician know if something has changed. We also have the chatbot. 
So down here at the bottom, if we click on this, our chatbot comes up and starts with some questions. This is a full workflow that you can actually manipulate. This is an out of the box workflow that you could start with, or you could do your own workflow if you didn't want to ask the questions and just go to speak with someone. You could have it automatically ping your um, agent if the agents were in the chat, etc. Going over into our client, that's pretty much the gist of Portal. Um, very customizable. You can do anything that you might want with it. Along with the CSS, it is also available for configuration within the configuration of Halo. So looking in the client, our client is fully web-based. It is, again, reactive. So if we move this around, you'll notice that my widgets, they'll move with me however I need to go based upon my resolution. The client is the same as the admin, so there's not a difference as far as a different admin tool or as far as a different client tool. What I see over here on the left-hand side and anything that I have access to is based upon roles or security of some sort that we can then easily manipulate. Within Halo, we do follow ITIL, so we have our incident management, request management, problem management, change management, um, and then we've also got projects, calendars, customers, assets, as well as contract management, vendor management, etc. Um, our, our calendar is fully integrated with Outlook. It is a bi-directional integration, so you can have appointments that are on your calendar from within Halo within a ticket that you can also have on your Exchange calendar. So let's just take a real quick look into incident management and the forms. Most of these forms are gonna look the same regardless of if you're in incident, request, problem, change. They're all gonna look the same when we get into the forms. Holding over here, you'll notice we do have a preview so we can kind of see what's in there as far as the description is concerned. The short description or the summary in this case is what we see in the, in the top up here. We can manipulate this grid. Uh, we can edit columns, add them to them, take them away, etc. Uh, we could also use this without saving it. So if we wanted to just look and see how that this was here, if I wanted to add another particular one, we could add extra columns to that, and then I could do it without saving it and not mess up what I have as far as the default, and that's our use without saving. Or I could save it as new if I wanted to make a particular one for me, then I could see this is Mike's columns or this is Mike's grid, etc. Coming back over into your screen, we do have several filter options. So up in here in the top, I've got incident by team, get incident by agent. If I wanted to see incident by types, um, we could we have several different ones, and this works across all of the other different areas that we have. This particular one, I'm just going to keep it within Teams so that I can see everybody with my Teams and what they have assigned to them. It also has a secondary filter over here in the center where I can see all incidents, closed incidents, open incidents, which is a default, or open incidents including SLA hold. And the reason there's a difference there is open incidents does not include us a hold because we want folks to be uh, focused on what we have going on and not looking at ones maybe we're waiting for a vendor or a user that actually has a management in the background of pinging the user X amount of times and could even close it out if you would like if the, if the vendor or user did not get with you in time. Also puts our SLA on hold. You'll notice I do have these out here to tell me how much time that I have left. These particular ones out of the box, I've already breached my time, so that is why it has this red zero and zero, etc. But let's take a look at, an, at a ticket. We do have a three columnar format. Um, in this big center one, if I had tabs that I wanted to have more than one column, we definitely can do that. We can have up to three or four, I believe, um, and you can make the columns up and down or whatever that you would want. Over here, we've got our summary, our description, our workflow. So if we had workflows that we've got going back, and I'll point out that we have our workflows down here. This particular one is following an incident management workflow with triage. And what that means is that I can 
take care of the actions up here with whatever I want based upon what stage I'm in the workflow. So since I'm in the triage stage, the actions I see are triage, email user, and private note. If I go ahead and triage this ticket and put what ticket type it's in, so we're going to see this is an incident. What is the impact and the urgency? If we want to change the categorization, so maybe our users didn't quite get what it was as far as categorization, we could change it here. If it was a different team, we needed to assign it to and a different agent and any additional notes. And then I can save that. And what you'll notice is a couple of things. I do have a note down here um, of that I did complete my triage and it moved me to the in progress state. And up here at the top, you'll also see a bunch of different actions. And the actions are based upon the stage that I went into. So now my stage is in progress um, from the triage. I've also kicked off my SLA process. So you see, I do now have a timer that's timing against me as far as a response and a resolution. Other things we have in this window, we've got our ticket creation, we've got our incident type or our ticket type, I should say. Workflow, statuses, we could adjust statuses from here. Teams, if I needed to reassign it or reassign to a different agent. And then our categorization and our related services, if this was a related service ticket. One of the things you'll notice is I had this little flyout come out over here. The flyout is looking at fields and trying to suggest, based upon what kind of ticket it is, if we have some knowledge articles. Um, or if I have matching problems, maybe I have some problems over here that we've got going on that I might want to attach this particular incident to. We could also see similar incidents that are currently open. So maybe I've got an issue. So I've got a bunch of them coming in and they're the same exact ones. We need to raise the alarm. And then any similar closed incidents in case that we had some things that were going on yesterday, etc. Some of the things you'll also see up here is my notifications. So this tells me anything that I have access to, new tickets that were logged, if they were updated, if somebody was trying to get a hold of me, etc. We also have our to-do lists. So if I had a appointment that I was going to or a task that I needed to do for this particular one, it would show in my to-do list. Any feed information, so very similar to my notifications, except this is everything that's going on with any ticket that I might be following. We have our question mark up here so that we can find guides, our YouTube channel, um, what's new within it, and release details. I'd like to take a moment to look at the release details really quick because I really like this one. This tells me what version I'm on. So I'm currently on the 2.111.5. We can see what's in that current version over here on the left-hand side with new features and any patch fixes that may have been happening with it. Halo is very good about giving you the new features, what they are, if we wanted to see you know, those things that I had, if I had screenshots to show me how they're, what's going on, and any bug fixes. So as with any software program, we're going to have bugs, but Halo is very good about fixing those bugs very quickly. Throughout the version that you're on, you'll automatically get pushed with patches, if that is your choice, to be able to get those bugs fixed. So you may come in one day and, and have an issue, come in the next day and show your manager and say, hey, yeah, here's my issue. It may already have been fixed last night um, due to the patch pushing. Back into the incident, one thing that you'll notice is it will take me over here and I see my SLA time left. So since that started kicking off, we've got our status, we've got our priority, we've got our types. If I wanted to, there was a bunch of these that came in at the same time and they were for the same thing, I could select them and then I could drag and drop those onto another ticket and it gives me the option to either merge those or link those. And if I link those, what's going to happen is it's going to create children tickets. So I will save that so that we can see what it looks like. And you'll notice now I have C's next to these and I have a P at the top one that I dropped it on so that we can see that it's children and parents. I also have other things that I go. So if I select any of these, I'll get a little edit button up here and it will apply anything that I have within this menu to those five that I have selected 
or if I only have four selected or three selected, it will apply those particular things as well. If I had a ticket that was unassigned, as I'm in this unassigned queue at the moment, I'll go over here and see. So we've got three that are unassigned. Maybe I want to assign these to Jennifer. I could easily select one or more, and then I just move them over to Jennifer and drop them on her name, and she will automatically be assigned those. So you'll see that it came out of unassigned, and they are assigned to Jennifer. Vice versa, if I wanted to move this back to unassigned or move to somebody else, I could just loop, move one of those and make it into Mary's queue. So that is incident management in a nutshell. Uh, we will go into a deeper dive in some future videos, but this is showing you kind of the layout as far as it's concerned within Halo. One of the other things I'd like to mention is related assets. Any time that you see related assets anywhere in any of the things that you're doing, you can add them by user assets, sites, search all assets, user previously selected or create a new asset. I'm going to search the user's asset and see if I have any out there, and I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that filter and just look for all assets that I have active. Selecting a workstation, I can confirm my selection, and what you'll notice is if I have a remote program that is connected to Halo, I could then connect directly from here using that remote program to get into my workstation to help my folks that I need to help. Request management is very much similar. Some of the things that we do have different in request management is we have an approval process. So the screen you'll notice is still the same three screen um, and we have a different workflow. This particular one is not set, so it is using an, the generic workflow for uh, service requests. We'll see related assets once again and we also see an approval process. So if we had an approval that was going on here, I could request approval that would give me one. Just going to put a test the note in here and click on save. And then who is the approver that I'm looking for? And now if we go to our approval process, you'll notice I have an approver that's waiting. So it cannot go to the next um, whatever it is that I might be waiting on, if I have it within my workflow, then it won't go to the next part of the workflow or the next stage unless I approve it. Since I am the approver, I can right click and I can accept or reject. I could resend this. So we have all of those people that are, hey, I didn't get approval email. You could resend the approval email. You could also remove the ad hoc remover if you wanted to. And if I have that ability, I could add new folks in here as well and put a mandatory approver. Yes, it does have a delegation within the portal itself. If I go over to my accounts and go to um, password and security, nope, that's the wrong one. If I go up to, to my accounts and go to settings, then I have approval dedication, delegation activated, or I could approve it for only during this time or just until I come back in here and select for not um, for not having a delegation activated. So if I have it activated, I can see between this time and this time, uh, then the, it would only do during that period. Okay, so that was the difference between request management and incident management. We will definitely go into workflows in a future video. We also have problem which again is very similar. We have different things that we have across the top. Some of the things I like to call out is we have cause identified, cause not identified as far as workflows. If I had children that were attached to this, I would have a button up here for updating the children, whether I wanted to send an email or whatever I wanted to hit a private note, it could percolate that down into the children. Change request, so I do have a firewall change request that's in here. It does follow the ITIL, so if it's a standard change out of the box, does not require an approval. If I had a normal change, it would require approval from a cab. An emergency change may require approval from a cab or an eCab if we wanted to make it that way. Have some related assets in here, so this particular one is for my Azure server. 
and then the change management um, tab, so all the things that I needed as far as when I put that change in, and then an audit log that I may have going on as far as what action was taken within this particular change. One of the things that we will look at shortly will be the assets. Everything that happens to an asset, so if I have a ticket that has an asset here, and I have an incident, or I have a service request, or I have a change, or I have a problem, all of those are tracked in the asset screen that we will take a look at in a moment. This also has a workflow through it, so you can see in my stages here, I've got up to five stages, um, and this is going to go through the life cycle. As I go through different stages, once again, I may see different things up here as far as actions are concerned, because they are based upon the stages of the workflow. Projects. So looking at projects, very exciting. We do have a Kanban board in here, the ability to do so. So see, there, these are tasks that I have underneath a server decommission project. I can have templates that automatically create these particular tasks if these are ones that I have within um, my template for server decommission or whatever else that I might be doing a project for. You do still treat this three column format with my end user details, project information, etc. What workflow that I'm showing, it does have a workflow as well. If I have budgets against this particular project, um, I have budgets that I can add, so out of the box budgets, or if I wanted to add some more budgets, then I could do those and uh, make up whatever ones that I need progress within this ticket and we also have the ability which is not turned on out of the box but we can make tasks based upon what stage that you're in in the project so if we are doing a project plan that's the first thing that needs to be done that's the only thing we have up in here is to approve project plan then we could have that in the first stage and it will not create the tasks until you have completed that project plan. Any of the tasks that I do have a budget for, and I do like to show this one, so I'm going to create a new task. I'm going to make a um, technical support task and what my details might be that we have in here. And then the budget type, very important. I'm going to put budget type as far as support how many hours that particular thing might take, the project start time, and then the project in or the task in time, the task start time and the task in time, as well as the team it might be assigned to. And if I wanted to unassign or assign it to a particular person, I could do that as well. I could also apply a template to this. So if I have templates for development tasks and everything would be automatically filled in and then I could go through and change them if I wanted to. So mostly if our development tasks are always within a four hours, I could then apply a template and then put that as well. Attach additional documentation to this task if I wanted to be able to do that um, or if I wanted to save this as a new template. So this is something I'm seeing that I'm doing over and over and over. I could say it as a new template and apply it later. I'm going to go ahead and submit that one real quick. And once this one comes up, we are actually going to complete it. So under my project tasks, I do have that new technical support task down here. Um, if I click into it, normally you wouldn't do it through here. You would have it already on your screen to be able to work on one of your areas that you might have. So here is my screen for my task. Again, very much similar to everything else that we've looked at with three columnar format. Any of the things that I have up here that I can do, so I'm going to put in a private note. Um, I might want to change this to in progress and save it. Done. I've done everything that I needed to do with this particular task, turn something on, turn something off, um, installed something, etc. I'm going to resolve this task. Um, I've completed it with my closure code and this particular one, I could do it as an email, or if I turn the email off, it would just make it as a note, and then I could save it. So now this one has been resolved. If we go back over to our projects, you'll notice that I do not have to move this. It automatically moved it over into a closed status. 
Um, if I had time tracking turned on, which I do not have it turned on within this particular demo as an out of the box, this is a fresh one that I just got today, um, it could automatically roll that up. So as a budget for a technical task that was against the budget for technical support, however much time that I tracked within there, if I had time management turned on, would automatically complete. Um, and that's something that we will look at again in a future video going into a deep dive, trying to keep this as short as I can. CMDB, so let's go look at CMDB real quick. Um, we've got an asset here. Um, as I was talking about before, if we look at this asset, we can see open tickets, any recent activity that may have been happening to this particular asset relationships as far as upstream and downstream or related services that this asset may have. So if I have an exchange server, I might want to put this as the related service to this as exchange and any knowledge base articles that we could have on it. And incidents, requests, problems, change, projects, any of the history I might have to it, as well as the change history. So this particular one moved from here to another site, to another user. We have all of that history that we have in here, as well as vendor and maintenance contracts. We do have contract management. We have approvals, knowledge base. We can take a look at that real quick. So if I had something in my knowledge, I do have the ability to make knowledge articles that are with both just text, but I can also put any kind of um, uh, pictures if I wanted to put in there. So if I had pictures that I needed to put in there to kind of show what was going on, it will support that as well. Our service catalog, so this is what we saw on our portal. Our vendor management, so from a vendor management standpoint, I've got my contracts, my contacts, my assets, my documents. Um, what is the vendor API access? So if we have API access for your vendor, then we can put it all in here and give them that access. Items, so this is a product catalog for ITAM that is out of the box. Um, so if I wanted to put products in here as far as costing and pricing, project bundles, receiving stock, stock transfers, um, all kinds of different things that, that is in here as far as out of the box for doing ITAM. Reporting, very important. We've got hundreds of reports in here that are already downloaded whenever you get one of these trial versions. We also have an online repository. So from an online repository, there's thousands of reports out here. You can easily search for one that you might want to look at. Maybe it's a help desk report or an NSLA report. Let's try that. So we've got different ones that we might have here. If I like to look at this one, I can see, okay, that's a nice report. I could add this to my library um, and then go back to my reports that I have down here. And there's that one that I had. I can now edit this to make it my report um, from the online repository. From the reporting standpoint side of the house, we can send this via an email, export it as CSV. We also have the details of our report, our data source. We can write our own SQL. Fields from that data source, chart setups, um, lots of different options here. The appearance, um, availability. So who can see this particular report, who has access to the report, etc. And then we have a publish button as well if we wanted to publish that one. Scheduled emails, so I could schedule this report to go out at any time, uh, much like you see within uh, an Outlook. So I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or I may have times, scheduled times of the week, maybe it's the first Monday, maybe it's second Monday, whatever it is. Include a PDF report of this report, a CSV, um, and send even if the report contains no data or don't send. If I have it unchecked, uh, they won't get a, an email. And then I can also preview report to see how this particular one is going to look before that I actually get all of it done and save it, etc. Dashboards, we do have dashboards. They are very configurable. You can configure all of the widgets. Most of the widgets are based upon our reports. Um, so we can do any, any number of things with those. Once we get a report, we like it, we could turn it into a widget on one of our dashboards. 
configuration, I'm going to tell you right now, and this is one of the things that I've seen in any ITS sub program in the past. If I want project management, if I want chatbot, if I want sales, if I want software releases, if I want quotations or purchase or anything that is normally grayed out here, um, then I would have to pay an extra fee. Everything from Halo is inclusive, meaning if I want it, I simply turn it on or I turn it off. If I don't want project management, I turn it on or I turn it off. Software releases, etc. If I am not wanting somebody, there's our time management, then I can turn it on or off. Each of these has extra configuration underneath it. So if I go to billing, for instance, we have lots of things that we can do as well as integrations into our some of our billing platforms. Speaking of integrations, there are tons of integrations. When we started with this one, and you may have watched the original video, if you haven't, go back and look for the original video that was done a couple of years ago, and you'll notice the integrations were very small. In a span of just a couple of years, I have watched this grow tremendously. And we now have out-of-the-box integrations with all kinds of different things from remote supports to CRMs, automation, identity managements. We have the biggest ones of Okta. And we've got Azure Active Directory, um, Active Directory as well. Communications, Teams, and Slack, and Twitter, Zoom, Facebook, all of the big ones that we've got here. Incident Management, um, into PagerDuty, and ServiceNow, and Jira Service Management. Um, documentation, Accounts Payable, Distribution, Miscellaneous, there's all kinds of things. And again, these are, if I want them, do I have to pay an extra price? You do not. You simply turn it on, you go to it and configure it. In Slack, it may have some things that you have to do, um, and then you that's it. You turn it on and you start using it. Most of these are very easy. So if I have Azure Active Directory, for instance, all I need is my tenant ID, my application ID, um, and the other things that I have to do as far as filling in. Single sign-on. Once you get the Azure Active Directory, you can put your single sign-on information in here. You import your agents. You go back to the login screen, and it's automatically there. You sign in, single sign-on. Everything works. It is just a great program. One last thing that I will leave you with. Um, I am through pretty much the entire overview that I wanted to do for as far as Halo ITSM. Um, is the upgrade process. The upgrade process that we have seen is absolutely seamless. Um, I have a demo environment that I keep updated to the most current version or the most stable version or even the beta. Um, if you'd like to have your dev environment on the beta so that you can make sure and test things before they update your production, you absolutely can do that. Um, and then it's seamless. They do everything if you're hosted. They update everything, and, and you come in the next day, and you see new stuff. I do demos all the time where I'm finding new stuff all the time. These guys are going great. They're continuing to do really good, um, and we can't wait for the future. So thank you for joining me, um, and I hope to see you very soon.